to Married at First Sight, Season 16, Episode 15. And my name is Deborah, and I'm going to be doing the recap review of all the individual couples. I do them one by one, a separate videos. And at the end of each video, you can click on the link above around my head, and you can go on and watch the next video. And I'll also include the links down in the description and the chat box. Please don't forget to like and subscribe this video and absolutely drop down in the comments and let's talk about everything I said and everything you watched on this episode. And now we're moving on to Clint and Gina or as we're calling it a driving Miss Daisy. And uh, if we drive in Miss Daisy, Dr. Pepper, or who is Morgan Freeman? We know who Morgan Freeman is. Morgan Freeman is Clint, the ginger man. <laughs> We are talking about a driving Miss Daisy. Uh, Gina is the white woman sitting in the back with her slurs, calling people ginger. And Morgan Freeman is the one in front um, with the one with the patience of being, uh, having something to talk about. And uh, Gina is the white woman in the back doing nothing but uh, saying nasty things and complaining. That's who, uh, that's who, that's who Gina was from the very beginning. And when Dr. Pepper said, uh, driving Miss Daddy, I busted up laughing. At first, I was like, how is that a romantic movie? But you know what? It is a perfect example of who these two are. Because Gina sat in the back seat of this wedding and still is sitting in the back seat because she still don't do a doggone thing. She doesn't do anything. She sits in the back seat. She lets a Clint sit in the front seat driving, do all the work. Clint got to cook. Clint got to clean. Clint got to take out uh, the dog. Clint got to come up with all the fun. Clint got to come up with all the jokes. Clint got to be the come up with all the ideas. And Gina gets, gets to act like the old white woman and sit in the back seat and complain and call the man in front who's driving the car slurs and of what he don't do and what he don't do right. It actually is a perfect movie, a perfect movie, uh, Dr. Pepper. And I guess what she's hoping for is that Clint will be like a Morgan Freeman and then eventually um, they'll fall in love and the old white woman in the back of the car will eventually come to love and respect uh, the guy in front. By the time she comes to love and respect the guy in front, uh, Dr. Pepper, uh, she's dying. She's dead. And that's the story of Gina. Uh, by the time Gina is figuring out that dang, this stuff went real left. And maybe if I had never called him slurs and maybe if I had done a little bit more, maybe if I had, if I were a different person, maybe this relationship wouldn't have gone off the cliff because Gina absolutely drove this marriage off the cliff. Morgan Freeman may not have driven that car off the cliff. Listen to that white woman in the back, snap back at him behind his neck and call him names. But guess what? Gina did that to Clint, and she better be glad Clint didn't drive this car, their car, their marital car, off the cliff. Come to find out that um, Clint's love language is acts of service, and Gina's love language is uh, words of affirmation. So Gina's love language is words of affirmation, which makes sense on why she says all these nice things about herself that aren't true. Because what Gina really wants is she wants you to say those things. When I told you Gina embellishes stories, I said, why does she do that? Because really what she's doing is she's pumping up herself. And what she wants is she wants you to pump her up just like that. She wants you to say things about her that aren't true. So because no one is saying it, I'll say it myself. I got a 26 inch waist. I am fun. I'm outgoing. I'm athletic. I'm a beauty mogul. I have lots of salons. Um, I'm building a new salon from scratch, not just a little suite. Salon suite. No, I'm building a whole building. Okay, Gina, I don't believe that. Um, think of all the stories Gina said about herself. I'm a bartender, but come to find out she was only pouring bar in plastic solo cups. And it was only beer. It wasn't even mixed drinks. <sighs> now we get it. Gina's love language is, uh, is words of affirmation. That's her love language. And what she told, uh, who was she with, Dr. Pepper or I don't know, whoever she was with the counselor. She said, that's what I need. I need more affirmations. Tell her how proud you are of her. Tell her how beautiful she is. Tell her. That's why when Clint told her, um, you're not all that. And I normally like slender women. That's why I hit so hard on Gina. Because Gina's love language is, uh, is words of affirmation. And he stung her 
at her weakest and lowest and most vulnerable spot and she hasn't been able to get over it. But guess what? Clint's love language is acts of service. And what does Gina do? Nothing. Have we seen Gina do anything for Clint? He's waiting. He said, can you cook me dinner? Can you do something for me? Can I come home and you've done a little bit of a decoration, something different than I'm used to? And she said, a cooking is your job. There you go. Well, if you can't do anything for him, his love language is acts of service, then why should he tell you something sweet? Why should he put candy in your ears? Why should he blow you up? Because she wants all you to tell her how great she is, but she don't want to do nothing for Clint. This is why I now see this story about how McKinley drops down in her DMs. Because guess what? She's a sucker for words of affirmation. And if he laid any kind of words down on her at all in those DMs, Gina ate it up. She ate it up because that's what she likes to hear. She likes to hear how great she is. She got her own fan club. She had these uh, stylists come over for that lasagna so they could puff her up and tell her how she, great she is. She loves to hear it. She wants a record put on. She says, she says I'll put some R&B on so R&B songs can tell her how great she is. That's okay if your love language is words of affirmation, but that means you need to give somebody else their love language. What you gonna do for Clint, Gina? In exchange for words of affirmation, what are you going to do? I want to see in these next episodes, is Gina going to do something? Because I really haven't seen Gina do anything, nothing. And Clint is over here trying to love on her through acts of service. He's trying to do all these things for her, take the dog out, cook for her, clean for her, come up with fun things for them to do. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do activities. Let's be adventurous. Those are doing things because that's his love language. But Gina is sitting over here saying, well, you're doing all those things, but you're not doing the things I need the most. And that is a tell me how beautiful and wonderful I am, how smart I am and how successful I am. I need words, Clint. Don't just take me around and take me hiking and take me to the waterfall and, and, and love on my dog and do this. I need you to tell me how wonderful and great I am, how I got a 26 inch waist, how I'm beautiful, how I'm adventurous, how I'm athletic. Uh, pump me up. Gas me up, Clint. Gas me up. It's sinking in. I can tell you, I can look at Gina and I could tell it's sinking into Gina for her to know she jacked this up. And now she's too scared and she's too proud to admit it. Gina's actually having a lot of fun with Clint. But now she's too proud to admit it. She's too proud to go back and apologize and talk about what she did wrong in the beginning of the relationship. And now let's wipe the slate clean because she's still too hurt over the words and she's too proud to admit she jacked this stuff up. She really is driving Miss Daisy. She was the white woman sitting in the back seat of the car, cussing and fussing and talking about the ginger man driving the car. But instead, in this episode, in the, but instead, in this little gameplay, a Morgan Freeman turned around and cussed out that white woman. <laughs> That's how that movie would have gone with, Gen with Gina and Clint. He didn't just keep a looking forward and driving. Yep, I see it. I see driving, Miss Daisy. I see it. But you know what? Gina really messed this up. She really messed this up. In the beginning, I didn't even think that these two could make it, but I actually see a scenario and maybe when it could have, they could have made it. Do I think that Gina is actually Clint's exact type? No, I don't think she is. I don't think she is. But if Gina would have been outgoing and fun and a little bit different person, Clint would have overlooked it. Clint would have overlooked it because I think he does care for Gina. I think Clint would have overlooked it. He would have overlooked it because that even that little dig that she made in him, it, it, it stung him, it bothered him, but he was able to get over it. He was able to get over it. It's Gina who's gotten stuck. It's Gina who doesn't want to open up, be vulnerable and say, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong about Clint from the very beginning. I was wrong. I should have never said those things at all. And, we, and, and she still wants to talk about how, oh, well, we both were in the friend zone. We both were in the friend zone. Gina, every time that question comes up, she interrupts Clint. Clint can't even answer. She's getting the answer out. Why is she getting the answer out so fast? Is because she doesn't want to hear him say something different. She doesn't want to hear him say something different because then that would open up a whole emotional Pandora's box. And she doesn't want to open up that box. She doesn't want to open it up at all. Too bad. Too bad. Maybe under different circumstances, these two could have made it. She's not fun. She's not adventurous. She's not outgoing. 
She's none of those things, but she still wants you to say it. She wants you to gas her up. She wants you to tell her things that she's not so that she feels good. But then again, she don't want to do nothing. Let's see. Let's see going forward here. If Gina actually does anything for Clint, does acts of service. Let's see what type of acts of service Gina does for Clint. I want to see it. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Be sure to watch my other videos. Talk to you later. Bye.